Hi guys! This is your Tita in China and today we are back with a new skincare video. Today is another ingredient spotlight day and we are going to talk about controversial ingredients, fragrance as well as essential oils. We will talk about what fragrance is or what fragrance is in this context, what essential oils are, as well as why fragrance is being used in the industry and whether or not you really need to skip fragrance in your skincare routine, who needs it, who doesn't need it, and overall information about fragrance and essential oils and whether or not it is for you. If you're new here, welcome! My name is Emeline and I am your Tita in China. I come up with skincare related videos as well as living in China related videos. So if these are things that are interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification so that you will know the next time I will upload a new video. First, let's talk about fragrance in skincare. And here I'm referring to fragrance as in the word fragrance in the ingredients list or perfume or parfum. And these are substances that have a pleasant odor that also impart a pleasant aroma or a pleasant smell to the end product. These are ingredients that definitely don't have any other skincare benefits other than to give that product a particular scent. When you see the word fragrance, perfume, or parfum in the ingredients list of your skincare products, this is usually a blend of thousands or hundreds of chemical compounds that create a particular scent. Every cosmetic manufacturer, if they do use fragrance, would have their own blend that creates a unique scent for their skincare products. This is why fragrances are called a proprietary blend. It's a secret formula for the scent that they use for their skincare products. It is actually one way of distinguishing themselves from all the other skincare brands. So because it's a secret formula or a proprietary blend, the skincare manufacturers are not actually legally bound to tell you exactly what compounds went into the creation of that fragrance. Now this can be problematic for some people because of all the hundreds or thousands of chemical compounds, you might be allergic to some of them. And since they don't need to disclose any of these compounds, you really don't know. So it's like a Russian roulette whether or not you're going to be allergic to this particular product because of the fragrance. The fact of the matter is the skin on our face is not really designed to withstand perfume because it is thinner and more delicate than the other parts of the body. Having said that, not everyone is sensitive to fragrance and not everyone really needs to avoid fragrance. What you do need to know about fragrance is that it is a known allergen. Therefore, it can actually trigger things like eczema, psoriasis, or rosacea, but it can also actually trigger minor or more benign reactions like dryness, itching, and irritation. Since fragrance can make your skin more sensitive or highly irritable, you might not be able to use or you might not be able to tolerate products that are actually helpful for your skin. Like for example, certain sunscreens, exfoliating acids, or retinoids. So why do cosmetic manufacturers use fragrance? And the answer really is, it's marketing. <gasps> The reality is, even the most hypoallergenic and dermatologist-tested products in the market can actually smell plasticky or industrial. They don't smell very good. Can you imagine the kind of headache that cosmetic manufacturers and marketers will have if they are going to try to convince you that this product is good for sensitive skin but it smells kind of like plastic balloon or kind of like kerosene? Oh. Do you think that as a consumer, you will be convinced that this toner that smells kind of like Minola cooking oil or something like coconut oil will be good for oily skin and acne? No. This is the reason why many cosmetic manufacturers are compelled to put fragrance into their products because it's very hard to sell a product that doesn't smell good. To add to that, the fragrance that cosmetic manufacturers choose to add into their products would actually depend on what the marketing of the product will be. So for example, if this product is designed for sensitive skin, if the marketing campaign will be full of words like green, tender, or loving, or soothing, nourishing, if these are words that will accompany the marketing campaign, you can be sure that the scents that the manufacturer will use will be powdery and slightly floral. I find myself coming back to you, my one and only. Because these are scents 
that we associate words like clean, green, mild, gentle. It's going to be a very hard sell if you're going to say, oh, this moisturizer is great for sensitive skin. It's mild, it's gentle. And all of a sudden, when you smell the product, it smells like, it smells like Tide or Perla or something like that. It's just not going to work. And notice if a product is marketed towards younger people, young professionals, for example, with words like teen, young, cool, driven, or um, fierce, stuff like that, YOLO. If all of these words are in the marketing campaign, you will be sure that the scent will be citrusy or fruity or something that sort of wakes you up. So fragrance is part of the marketing of the product. Another marketing reason for adding fragrance into skincare products is to appeal to your memory. Whether you're conscious of this or not, our memories are actually very important to us human beings. It's how we learn, it's how we become who we are. And there are fewer things that are more powerful than scent to evoke those memories. So this is the reason why cosmetic manufacturers tend to bring scents that have worked for them from the past. Because like for example, Pond's Cold Cream. If you have seen your mother or your grandmother using Pond's Cold Cream, you remember that scent, you remember that feeling of watching your mom doing her makeup or doing her nighttime routine. And it gives you nice, fuzzy feelings. So you tend to gravitate to things that also smell that way. Not necessarily the same cold cream, the same brand, the same everything, but just things that smell the same can actually trigger those same fuzzy warm memories that you associate so much with taking care of yourself. So one experience that I have related to this, when I was working for this company and they released a line for, they were about to release the line for a night moisturizer. So of course, coming from my background, you would think, oh, maybe something that's chamomile or lavender because that's what we associate for nighttime. In our focus group, when we were doing the surveys and we were doing the testing, what came out is that Chinese people actually prefer this combination of herbal scents. It's almost like a manzanilla oil. It's this one here. They actually prefer this kind of scent. And when we looked at the survey, we realized that it's because it's similar to this anti-mosquito spray. And uh, it's a heat-dispelling oil, you know. And the mothers would put this on toddlers or babies or even young children to dispel heat para hindi sila mainitan. And that's the kind of smell that they associate to nighttime. So you can see here that different cultures have different habits and they have different associations. But at the end of the day, we always gravitate to things that have appealed to us when we were younger. But is there a scientific reason? Is there a medical reason for adding fragrance into skincare? Absolutely not. There's absolutely no reason for us to add fragrance into skincare. It's not necessary and it will never be necessary. It is all aesthetics. It is all sensorial. However, unnecessary does not mean bad. So is fragrance bad? The short answer is, it's bad for some people. Some people with intolerant skin, with sensitive skin, will definitely not do well with fragrance and would be better off to just avoid them completely. However, there are some people who are allergic only to certain types of fragrance. Some people can use products with fragrance with no problems whatsoever or with only minor problems. Like maybe it's a little itchy, maybe it's a little bit uncomfortable. So these are minor inconveniences and they would prefer to keep using the product with fragrance because they can tolerate it. They can tolerate even the mild side effects. One thing to remember, and this is scientifically speaking, fragrance can also sensitize the skin over time. Note that I say it can, okay? Again, not everyone will become sensitized to fragrance over time. It just doesn't happen that way. We're all different. Our skin is different. Another thing that fragrance can do is to sort of keep your body's inflammatory response always on its toes. So um, the body, ha well, the immune system of the body has this, uh, it's sort of like a chain reaction which is called an inflammatory response. And this is usually triggered when there's trauma, bacteria, or just foreign substances that your body is not really aggressive. With. So fragrance, especially when applied a more delicate area like your face, can always be just very slightly inflammatory for your face or for your skin. But if you keep doing that over time, and especially if all of the products that you use do have fragrance, then you can, again that's the word, you can 
sensitize your skin which will eventually lead to an impaired skin barrier. So these are all known side effects, eczema breakout, psoriasis, or rosacea breakouts, to minor things like drying, itching, irritation, to more long-term effects like inflammation or even making your skin photosensitive. These are all known side effects for fragrance. These are all proven scientifically but it doesn't mean that it's been proven scientifically that it's proven for every single person. At the end of the day, everyone's skin is different. Everyone's skin is unique. My job is just to tell you what this ingredient is about, what it's for, what it does, what it doesn't do. But it's still your job to get to know your skin even more so that you can make better skincare choices. So like I said, if you have inflammatory skin problems like acne or rosacea, eczema or psoriasis, stay away from fragranced products. But even if you don't have skin issues, I would still suggest that you swap out even just a few of your skincare products. Minimizing the fragrance in your skincare, especially in leave-on products, will definitely improve your skin. If you are interested in swapping some of your skincare products for fragrance-free ones, then I suggest that you do that for the leave-on products especially. The wash of products, your cleansing oil, cleansing balm, or your uh, facial wash like that, or even micellar water, it's fine if they have fragrance because you will wash that off anyway. to essential oils in skincare and now I'm talking about fragrant essential oils. This is where I'm going to be a lot more assertive in my recommendation because essential oils basically are used as fragrance in skincare. There are actually very very few essential oils that have proven skincare benefits. Right on top of my head I can think of tea tree oil and chamomile oil. These two have, well tea tree has anti-acne properties and chamomile has anti-inflammatory properties. But if you think about it, why do you need to use tea tree oil? Why do you need to use chamomile oil if you want to take care of acne or if you want to reduce inflammation? There are other more scientifically proven um, skincare products or skincare ingredients like pantenol or niacinamide or allantoin, beta-glucan. There are a lot of these things that are proven to be helpful for the skin. Salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, and they don't have the same irritating effects of essential oil. The risks of using essential oil the irritancy that you can get from essential oils really outweigh all of the skincare benefits. And the skincare benefits that they offer aren't even unique. There are a lot of other ingredients that offer the same thing. What science tells us is that essential oils are allergenic and that essential oils are allergenic to a lot of people if not most people. This is especially true for citrus oils like grapefruit and lemon but as well as herbal oils like sage and rosemary. Now yes, just like fragrance, not everyone is allergic to essential oils. And some people can be so sensitive to essential oils that even essential oils in aroma diffusers or humidifiers can actually cause them to have an allergic reaction. But as with anything that can be allergenic, poisonous, or dangerous, the key is the dose. So in general, the fewer essential oils that the cosmetic manufacturer uses and the smaller the concentration, the better. What I don't like about essential oil is the way essential oils are marketed. Could you please? Essential oils often come with marketing campaigns that call them natural or chemical free. But I think that these are words that play tricks with the consumer. The reality is natural skincare is not, not always better than synthetic skincare. As a matter of fact, you are more likely to develop allergies towards natural skincare than purified synthetic skincare. So saying chemical free is a bit of a cop out because I mean, of all the things that you can use in your marketing campaign, why chemical free when everything is a chemical, even water is a chemical. This kind of marketing, I don't like it. It's kind of malicious, you know. It sends out, it's a little bit irresponsible. It sends out the wrong message. And the worst part is, it creates an audience that is misinformed. And misinformation is the most difficult thing to fix. And this is the reason why we still believe a lot of these myths about skincare and we still spend money and sacrifice our skin based on information that is wrong. I personally believe in creating a more informed audience, an audience who buys your products because your products are good, not because your products are just heavily marketed. The bottom line is essential oils and fragrances are not necessary in your skincare. 
your routine. You don't need them. There's no scientific or medical reason for adding fragrance into your skincare routine. And they are known allergens. Okay? They do cause allergies in many people and they do cause sensitivity in many people. They are mostly used for marketing. They are used to get your attention, to evoke nice memories, and to get you to buy. If you are after the sensorial experience, if you like the smell of lavender for example, you know, then why don't you light a scented candle or you turn on a diffuser or a humidifier with your favorite scents while you're putting on your skincare products. That is actually a better way of getting the fragrance without sacrificing or without putting your skin on the line. However, this channel is not just for people who have intolerant sensitive skin. This channel is for everyone. And I would rather shut this whole thing down than to demonize a particular skincare ingredient even if there's really no scientific basis for it. But the reality is even if fragrance and essential oils are allergens, not everyone is allergic to it. And I cannot just, you know, tell you guys to not use fragrance anymore, especially if there's a product with fragrance that you really, really love. And this is the reason why a lot of my product recommendations on this channel still have fragrance. It's just that I warn you about them. I warn you when something has fragrance or essential oils. Because it's all about making informed decisions. It's all about helping you find a skincare routine that you love and enjoy doing. I mean, if it works for you, then who's to say that you're wrong? So that's it guys, that's our video for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found this helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and share this with your friends who are also skincare buffs. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or violent reactions to anything I said in the video, please drop me a comment down below. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time. Bye!